For decades, the Boeing 737's horizontal stabilizer was considered a mature, well-understood system. There was no grounding, no emergency directive, no public warning. But quietly, the FAA has just proposed a move that changes how regulators are now viewing the jet's flight controls. Not the engines, not software, but a flight-critical component that directly controls pitch, now linked to reports of dangerous oscillations. This wasn't a crash. It was something far more unsettling. So why did they act now? And how serious is this issue really? Let's discover. What exactly did they do here? Because despite the reactions this sparked, this wasn't a grounding and it wasn't an emergency action. What they're issued was a Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, or NPRM, a formal regulatory step that signals a shift from monitoring to mandatory oversight. This proposal applies specifically to the Boeing Next Generation family and focuses on one flight-critical area, the horizontal stabilizer system. According to the proposal, they are seeking to require detailed inspections aimed at identifying wear looseness and mechanical degradation within the stabilizer components. This is not advisory guidance and not a recommendation that airlines can ignore. An NPRM is the regulatory pathway that leads to enforceable requirements once finalized, meaning this issue has moved beyond internal reporting and into the rulemaking process. That escalation alone is what makes this noteworthy. For years, issues related to in-service wear have often been addressed through service bulletins or operator awareness programs. Here, they are signaling that those mechanisms are no longer sufficient. The proposal reflects a conclusion that these findings cannot be treated as isolated events or routine aging effects. Instead, they warrant standardized inspection procedures across the fleet. It's also important to be precise about what this does and does not mean. They are not declaring the aircraft unsafe, and it is not restricting operations. Aircraft continue to fly under existing certifications, but the agency is formally intervening to ensure that mechanical degradation in a flight-critical control system is identified before it progresses further. That distinction matters. This step places the horizontal stabilizer into a category where regulatory tolerance is narrower especially given its direct role in pitch control. When they move an issue into an NPRM, it reflects concern, not about theoretical risk, but about observed patterns that demand consistency in how they are addressed. In other words, this proposal is not about reacting to a single incident. It is about standardizing oversight because the agency no longer views this as background noise. If you want to understand how regulators really think about aircraft risk, not just the headlines, consider subscribing. So if this wasn't driven by a failure or a crash, what exactly triggered the FAA to escalate the issue to this level in the first place? The answer sits in a set of reports that are far more serious than they might sound at first glance. Pitch oscillations. According to the reporting referenced, their proposal is linked to documented instances where aircraft experienced abnormal pitch behavior in service traced back to issues within the horizontal stabilizer system. And this is where the story shifts from regulatory procedure to operational concern. Pitch oscillation is not about passenger discomfort or minor handling quirks. Pitch oscillation means the aircraft is repeatedly and unintentionally 
deviating from stable longitudinal control. In normal operations, pitch stability is foundational. The aircraft should respond predictably to control inputs and remain steady when those inputs stop. When oscillations appear, it suggests that something within the control chain is no longer behaving as designed. In this case, reports pointed toward mechanical wear and looseness in stabilizer components, physical degradation rather than software logic or sensor interpretation. That distinction matters. These were not hypothetical simulations or lab findings. They were in-service behaviors observed during real operations. The FAA did not step in because a component failed outright. It stepped in because the aircraft was doing something it should never do in normal flight. That is a fundamentally different trigger. Regulators can tolerate defects that are rare, contained, or well understood. What they are far less willing to tolerate is unexpected aircraft behavior that erodes stability margins even if no incident has occurred. This is why the pitch oscillation reports represent the real inflection point. They reframe the issue from aging hardware to flight control integrity. Once a flight critical system shows signs of behavior outside its expected envelope, the regulatory calculus changes. At that stage, waiting for further data is no longer seen as neutral. It becomes a risk decision. And importantly, none of this suggests an immediate danger or loss of control scenario. The aircraft remains certified and operational. But it does explain why they chose to escalate from monitoring and reporting into a formal rulemaking pathway. The agency wasn't reacting to headlines. It was reacting to behavior. And that leads directly to why this development caught so many across the industry off guard. Do you see this as a maintenance issue or a deeper design oversight? Curious how you read this. The Boeing 737 Next Generation is widely regarded as one of the most mature commercial aircraft platforms in service. It has been flying for decades with thousands of airframes delivered and millions of flight hours accumulated worldwide. Its systems are not new experimental or recently redesigned. The horizontal stabilizer in particular is a long-established mechanical system that predates the MAX era and has been considered well understood. Because of that history, most operators and regulators expected any late-life issues to remain within the scope of routine maintenance and service bulletins, not formal regulatory escalation. That expectation is what made this moment unusual. The reports did not introduce a new technology risk. They emerged late in the aircraft's life cycle on a platform that many assumed had already revealed all of its major operational surprises. What changed was not the existence of wear, but how the FAA chose to respond to it. The agency moved from collecting service difficulty reports to proposing standardized mandatory inspections across the fleet. That shift signals a change in regulatory posture. It reflects a lower tolerance for variability, even on aircraft that have historically been given wide operational margins due to their maturity and track record. This is why it would be inaccurate to say no one knew about stabilizer wear. The more precise truth is that few expected they to formalize oversight in this way at this stage of the aircraft's life. Mature programs are typically managed through incremental adjustments, not broad regulatory action. By advancing this issue into the rulemaking process, they are effectively saying that longevity alone no longer guarantees regulatory comfort.
Past reliability does not exempt a system from closer scrutiny if in-service behavior challenges assumptions about stability and control. This development also reflects a broader shift in how legacy fleets are viewed. Rather than assuming that time in service automatically equates to risk reduction, regulators are increasingly willing to intervene when patterns emerge even if those patterns fall short of failures. That recalibration is what caught many observers off guard. Not because the 737NG was unsafe, but because it was assumed to be done. And that unexpected shift in oversight raises a final forward-looking question. What does this say about how the FAA and Boeing will manage aging aircraft programs going forward? So what does this actually signal going forward? Because this proposal wasn't just a technical footnote or a narrow compliance update, buried in regulatory language. It reflected a structural shift in how the FAA is now defining acceptable risk, particularly when it comes to flight critical control systems on aircraft that have been flying safely for decades. Historically, longevity in service acted as a form of regulatory insulation. If a system had accumulated millions of flight hours without a catastrophic failure, it was largely treated as mature, stable, and understood. That assumption is clearly being re-examined. In this case, the FAA did not wait for a breakdown, a loss of control event, or a high-profile incident to justify intervention. The trigger was reported in-service behavior that challenged the expectation of stability. That alone was enough to move the issue out of the background and into the formal rulemaking process. For Boeing, this is an important signal about how legacy aircraft are now viewed under expanded oversight. The 737-T is not a new design, not a transitional platform, and not part of the MAX-era redesign debates. Yet it is now subject to the same proactive scrutiny typically reserved for newer or more controversial programs. That suggests the FAA is applying a more uniform standard across fleets, where age and familiarity no longer guarantee regulatory quiet. Manufacturers are increasingly expected to remain deeply engaged with the operational health of their aircraft far longer than before, not just responding to failures, but addressing emerging trends before they cross a defined threshold. That extends the life cycle responsibility of the OEM and raises the bar for data monitoring reporting and corrective readiness. For airlines, the impact is practical and immediate. Mandatory inspections are not just checkboxes. They translate into additional maintenance planning, potential aircraft downtime, and scheduling adjustments across large fleets. Even when an inspection is relatively straightforward, applying it across dozens or hundreds of aircraft introduces friction into high utilization operations. For carriers relying on mature fleets to deliver predictable economics, this creates a new layer of uncertainty maintenance programs become more dynamic, buffers become tighter, and cost assumptions built on long-established reliability may need to be revisited. At a broader level, this development illustrates a recalibration in regulatory philosophy. The FAA appears increasingly unwilling to tolerate unexplained behavior in flight control systems regardless of how rare it may be or how long the aircraft has been in service. Stability is no longer something that is assumed based on history alone. It must be continuously demonstrated through data inspection and verification. That represents a more interventionist posture, one that prioritizes early signals over retrospective conclusions. And that's why this proposal matters 
beyond the specifics of one component or one aircraft family. It wasn't about an imminent danger or a sudden failure. It was about how much uncertainty regulators are willing to accept in systems that directly control an aircraft's behavior. The message is subtle but clear. Even on aircraft that everyone thought were already finished, the margin for unexplained risk is getting smaller. This wasn't about a broken part. It was about how much unexplained behavior regulators are still willing to tolerate, even on aircraft everyone thought were already finished.